everyone. So this is lesson 10 of our circle of life topic. This is our last lesson and we will do a revision lesson next lesson, but this is the last lesson of content. And today we are going to be looking at uh, how can we speed up photosynthesis? Okay, so uh, we've talked about photosynthesis a lot, the equation for it. So what I want you to do is just in your heads, you don't have to write it down, save the writing for the written phase at the end. What three things do plants need for photosynthesis? Okay, so uh, you can pause this slide, uh, uh, think about those, and then we'll go through the answers. So if you pause the slide now. Okay, so the three things the plants need for photosynthesis is sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. Okay, so really well done if you've got those three things. They need sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. So. Uh, what impacts photosynthesis? What, what can influence how quickly it happens? So there's several fa different factors that can affect the rate of photosynthesis. And these factors are usually to do with the reactants in the photosynthesis reaction. Okay, so the reactants are the three things that you just named, the sunlight, the carbon dioxide, and the water, okay? And they can affect how quickly or slowly photosynthesis happens, okay? For example, if you increase the concentration of carbon dioxide, there's more available for the reaction to take place at a greater rate, okay? So it happens more. So if there's a lot more carbon dioxide around the plant, the plant can take in more carbon dioxide. There's more carbon dioxide for the reaction to happen. OK, so carbon dioxide concentration is one of the um, one factor that can influence the rate of photosynthesis. OK. So another factor that impacts the rate of uh, reaction of photosynthesis is light intensity. If you've got more sunlight, then photosynthesis can happen more. It's got more energy to, for the reaction to happen more, okay? So when we say intensity, that just means strength of the sun, okay? If it's kind of cloudy out, then the light intensity will be lower than if it's a really bright, sunny day, okay? The sun, feel you can feel it on your skin, it feels stronger, okay? So the greater the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis, okay? And then one more factor which can impact the rate of photosynthesis is temperature. Okay, so the higher the temperature, there's more energy for the reaction to happen. Okay, so we've got carbon dioxide concentration, light intensity, and temperature. So, what are the three factors that we've just talked about? And why? Why do these factors affect photosynthesis rate? Okay, why does it influence it? So if you have a think about that and pause the slide now. Right, let's see how we did. So the factors that can influence photosynthesis are light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. And the reason why they affect photosynthesis, so the uh, higher the amount, um, higher the amounts are, sorry, higher amount of the factors increase the rate of, there's a typo there, that's why I got a bit confused. Higher the amounts of the factors increase the rate of photosynthesis because they're essential to carry out photosynthesis. So more of them means photosynthesis can happen more. So the more reactants there are, okay, the more photosynthesis can happen because they um, they need more of them, okay? So how do we know these factors affect photosynthesis? How can we measure or test it? So you can actually do experiments that measure how much photosynthesis is happening. During photosynthesis, oxygen is made as a product, okay? So that means that the plants give out oxygen. We talked about this when we talked about leaf structure. Remember, the oxygen comes out of the leaf through the stomata, okay? So we can measure the amount of photosynthesis by the amount of gas given off, okay? So if it gives off more oxygen, that must mean the reaction is happening more. 
So if we have a look at uh, this little practical setup here, this is an image of how we would carry out an experiment looking at how light intensity influences the rate of photosynthesis, okay? So we've got our plant here, which is the one going to be undergoing photosynthesis. You can see it's submerged in water, and you can see here the bubbles of gas being given off. And here's the lamp for light intensity. Okay. So the closer the lamp is to the setup, so um, the closer it is here, the higher the light intensity. Okay. So the closer it is, the higher the light intensity. Therefore, the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase. Okay, so there will be a lot more bubbles, okay, here if the lamp is closer to the practical setup. Okay, you see more bubbles of oxygen being given off by the plant. So that's how we can test how uh, light intensity impacts photosynthesis. You just get a lamp. Uh, you get and you find a way to measure the gas. So in this way, using the gas in water and uh, find, seeing how many bubbles are given off. OK, and just change the light intensity to see whether that causes a change in the amount of bubbles. So which of these is false? So have a read through, decide which is false. If you pause the slide now. OK, so what you should have had is that A is false. So I'll explain the other ones and then we'll talk about A. So increasing the light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis. Light is essential for photosynthesis. If there's a greater light intensity, then you're going to have a greater amount of photosynthesis. Decreasing the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases the rate of photosynthesis. Well, if you've got lots and lots of carbon dioxide that's needed, it's going to increase photosynthesis. So if you take some of that carbon dioxide away, there's not going to be as much for the reaction to happen. So it will decrease the rate of photosynthesis. And the rate of photosynthesis can be measured by how much oxygen is given off. Well, we saw um, that practical setup just then. And we were measuring the bubbles to explain, uh, to predict the rate of photosynthesis. So if the reaction is happening more, more oxygen is being made, therefore we'll see more bubbles. So D is correct. A, increasing the temperature decreases the rate of photosynthesis. So remember, if we increase the temperature of something, we're giving it more energy. If we've got more energy, the reaction is going to happen more. OK, so it will actually increase the rate of photosynthesis. Really good, uh, really well done if you got that one right. So what is a rate limiting factor? So temperature, carbon dioxide concentration and light intensity are known as rate limiting factors. But what does this mean? OK, so if we break down that that saying, so the rate is how much or how quickly photosynthesis happens, okay? So the first word, rate, how much or how quickly photosynthesis happens. Limiting, so limiting means affecting how much or little something happens, okay? So it sets limits. Um, so for example, a time limit, you're told a set time uh, that you need to be uh, finished with something by, okay? It's um, affecting how much or little something happens. That's limits for something. So that's the second word, so rate limiting. And then a factor is something that has an influence uh, on something else, okay? So rate limiting factors is something that influences how much or little photosynthesis happens. So the factors we've talked about here are carbon dioxide concentration, temperature, and light intensity, okay? That's something that has an influence on something else. That's something else being photosynthesis. They can increase or decrease the rate and limiting. OK, it's reliant on that. It's, these factors are the ones that set the limits OK, for photosynthesis happening. OK. So what are the rate limiting factors for photosynthesis? So if uh, you just have a quick think, 
pause this slide now. Okay, so what you should have had is temperature, carbon dioxide concentration, and light intensity are our rate limiting factors for photosynthesis. So our writing phase, phase describe the factors that can affect photosynthesis, explain how rate of photosynthesis can be measured, explain how change in light intensity or CO2 concentration affects rate of photosynthesis. So you're using those examples there. Explain why light intensity and CO2 concentration are known as rate limiting factors. Okay, so what does rate limiting factor mean? Okay, so um, give yourself 10 to 15 minutes uh, on this. Like always, you can look back in the video if you're not 100% sure of anything, because obviously we can't answer questions. So 10 to 15 minutes, give yourself that time. So if you pause this slide now, Right, okay, let's see how we've all done. So, we're working towards the factors that can affect photosynthesis are light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and temperature. Explain how the rate of photosynthesis can be measured. We can measure the rate of photosynthesis by how much oxygen is given off by the plant. The more gas given off, the greater the rate of photosynthesis, okay? So then, working beyond, Changing the light intensity can affect the rate of photosynthesis by increasing the availability of the um, of the reactants for the reaction of photosynthesis. Okay, so not the products, the reactants. Photosynthesis requires sunlight in order to happen. So increasing light intensity means that photosynthesis can be carried out at a much faster rate. Carbon dioxide is also a reactant needed for photosynthesis. In the same way, if the amount of carbon dioxide available increases, this will increase the rate of reaction or of photosynthesis by the plant. Okay, and then working beyond plus, a rate limiting factor is something that impacts the rate of reaction. Both carbon dioxide and light are required in order for photosynthesis to happen. They therefore impact the rate of photosynthesis. They can either impact the rate by increasing it or by limiting it, which is why they're known as rate limiting factors. Okay. So if you uh, write your sentence for today, today I've achieved, remember it's the word, not the color or the level, and make sure you're including the, um, the reason there. And once you've completed that, make sure you go on to show my homework and do the 10 question quiz. OK, so for the uh, there'll be another revision lesson uh, after this. Just summarizing the topic, there won't be a show my homework quiz for that. So this is the last show my homework quiz for this topic. OK, so make sure you go and you um, get that done so we know that you've uh, watched the lesson. OK. Well, you've all been. A done brilliant work this topic i'm sure year seven um revision lesson next i'm sure you'll all do brilliantly 